can you all hear me okay in the back? All right, well thank you for that lovely introduction. Um, and thank you all for coming to my talk. My name is Sheena Faraday. I'm a graduate student in Ann Yoder's lab at Duke University. And I'm gonna be talking about gene expression dynamics and how they relate to the hibernation phenotype in an adorable primate. Animals have developed numerous tactics to combat living in seasonal environments where food resources become scarce or completely disappear during the winter months. Some groups will migrate, traveling thousands of miles to seek out areas where resource availability is more favorable. Some groups will prepare for the winter by storing up food caches. All of these behaviors function to increase the likelihood that an animal will, will survive periods of resource scarcity. The type of response to seasonality that concerns the topic of my research is hibernation. Hibernation is the seasonal period of heterothermy that allows animals to save 70 to 85% of energy they would have burned through had they remained active during the winter. It is a controlled depression in metabolic rate and core body temperature, called torpor, um, punctuated by brief periods of rewarming, known as interbout arousal. This graph depicts um, body temperature of an Arctic ground squirrel uh, throughout the year. Um, so as you can see here, the torpor bout typically lasts between one to two weeks, in which then that animal then arouses during these interbout arousals for about 15 hours and then returns to torpor. So the hibernation period then is comprised of multiple torpor bouts. Um, and I'd also like to point out this dotted line down here is soil temperature that was taken from a data logger that was placed near the animal while in hibernation. And you can see here that there's, there's this temperature differential between body temperature and soil temperature. And this is due to the fact that hibernation is an active process. It's not just a passive lowering of body temperature due to ambient temperature or soil temperature. Um, body temperature is actively defended at a lower set point. Hibernating species are found within the deepest branches of the mammalian phylogeny. This cladogram shows the distribution of species within eight orders that use hibernation with the colored boxes um, indicating different responses along the spectrum of heterothermy from a daily torpor response to prolonged hibernation. This patchy distribution has generated much discussion on whether or not the common ancestor of mammals was a hibernator or not. And there are two theories that could account for this. The first is that the common ancestor of mammals was not a hibernator and that the trait has arisen multiple times through convergent <coughs> evolution. The second theory is that the common ancestor of mammals was a hibernator and this trait has been lost many times but retained in these groups that you see depicted here. Given this patchy distribution, some authorities have su suggested a similar molecular architecture underlying hibernation, and that all mammals have the genes needed for hibernation already in their genome, but that the hibernation phenotype is only expressed through unique patterns of gene expression. Using this information, we can begin to answer some intriguing evolutionary questions about this trait in modern day mammals. For example, using comparative physiology, we can look to see if similar patterns of gene expression or genetic pathways are being used among very distantly related hibernating species, um, which can then reveal some insight into this trait being a retained ancestral trait or one that shows evolutionary convergence. Uh, we can also test to see if the genes implicated in the hibernation phenotype have been enriched for positive selection. Operating under the hypothesis that the hibernation phenotype is due to differential expression of shared mammalian genes, my research objective is to identify and quantify gene expression profiles in white adipose tissue of fat-tailed dwarf lemurs. Using this approach, I hope to gain insight into the following question. What genes are correlated with the physiological states involved in hibernation? And are these genes shared among hibernators and regulated in the same way? So my study system is the fat-tailed dwarf lemur, Chirobalius medius. Um, they belong to a group that contains the only primate hibernators, which are the dwarf lemurs um, endemic to Madagascar. They're about 150 to 300 grams, so roughly squirrel-sized and nocturnal. And they occur in western and southern regions of Madagascar, in which they experience intense seasonality, 
Um, so virtually zero precipitation for up to eight months out of the year. And consequently, in the wild, these animals can hibernate for up to eight months out of the year. Um, they are unique among hibernators in that they hibernate in tree holes, which is pretty rare. Um, most hibernating species actually hibernate underground. And luckily for me, we have a captive colony of them about 30 minutes away at the Duke Lemur Center. <coughs> Fat-tailed dwarf lemurs display a cyclic body weight pattern. Um, in the active state, they are roughly 150 grams, like I said. Um, sometime in the fall, they increase their food intake and decrease locomo locomotion and begin to store fat in their um, nearly doubling their body weight up to 200 <coughs> grams. In the winter, they enter hibernation where they begin to sap and they rely solely on their stored fat reserves to fuel them throughout the hibernation season. So this project involves sampling captive animals at the Duke Lemur Center at three time points. And when I say sample, I mean I'm taking white adipose tissue, which I'll discuss um, on the next slide. So sampling time points were chosen as the most dynamic representation of the fat accumulation and breakdown phases of the silk annual cycle. So in October of 2012, I sampled white adipose tissue from animals in their active state. Body temperature is, around, is euthermic, so around 37 degrees, and an active body weight of 220 grams. In December of 2012, I sampled animals from their hyperphagic state, um, or intense fattening, in which they're eating a lot, gaining a lot of weight. Um, average body temperature of 37 degrees and um, average body weight of 222 grams. And in February of 2013, I sampled animals during a torpor bout, so body temperature was between 16 to 20 degrees Celsius and they had an average body weight of 193 grams. So before I go on to my results, I want to quickly go over my research methodology. So as I said, um, I sampled individuals at multiple time points. Um, <coughs> The way I did this was a needle biopsy to extract white adipose tissue from the tail, in which the fat storage is most concentrated. Um, I then isolated the RNA and submitted that to our sequencing facility for RNA-Seq. RNA-Seq generates short reads that we use for assembly and then as estimating transcript abundance with our, our, our bioinformatic pipeline. Um, so this is just a rough uh, roadmap of the bioinformatic pipeline we used. We take our raw alumina reads and we do a filtering step to remove adapters and terminal nucleotides, which are characterized usually by a low quality score. We then take our filtered reads and use that to generate our transcriptome using de novo assembly. And then from here, we take this transcriptome that we just generated and map our reads back onto it to estimate expression levels um, and calculate significance of differential gene expression. And I should point out that all this work was done by our collaborators in Barcelona um, Mara Alba's lab, specifically her graduate student, Jose Luis Villanueva Cana. We find evidence of differential gene expression between varying, varying physiological states. So for this project, we did pairwise comparisons between um, our three time points. So in the active versus torpor phase, we find 334 genes that are differentially expressed. In torpor versus hyperphagic, we find 246 and hyperphagic during active, we find 11. We then take these genes that are differentially expressed and blast them against the human, human genome to see which ones have homologs in humans. And we find 216 genes in active versus torpor, 95 genes in torpor versus hyperphagic, and five genes in hyperphagic during, uh, versus active, which leaves 118, 151, and six that don't have a hit in this could mean that either the genes are so dissimilar from human that they don't produce a significant blast hit, or that they're dwarf lemur specific. The, um, this is a pretty interesting result, which actually warrants future um, investigation, which we are currently working on. So for the rest of this talk, I'm gonna be focusing on the active versus torpor time point because they are the most physiologically distinct. So this volcano plot is an easy way to depict general patterns of differential gene expression. Um, it's a way to graphically dis display the results of a t-test for differential expression between two time points. Um, again, we're comparing torpor versus active here. So along the x-axis, we have um, the effect measured as the log fold change. So on the right side of the graph, these are genes that are upregulated during torpor, and then these negative 
values down here, a logical change in the negative is um, genes that are downregulated. And the y-axis is um, is a measure of significance, the inverse log um, 10 of a false discovery rate. So an FDR of 0.05 is considered significant. So the light blue genes are genes that have both a significant, um, are, are the ones that are differentially expressed. We find that genes involved in lipid metabolism are upregulated during torpor. So I know these are kind of hard to read, but the y-axis in all these graphs are just the raw mRNA count. Um, and then down here we have time points, so active, hyperphagic, and torpor. Um, PDK4 is a gene that regulates lipid metabolism by inhibiting phosphorylation of intermediates into the TCA cycle, which effectively blocks and ACFL1 converts free long chain fatty acids into fatty acetyl CoA esters um, and therefore plays a key role in fatty acid degradation. So it makes sense that these genes are upregulated during torpor relative to the active state. Conversely, we find that genes involved in glucose metabolism are downregulated. Um, ADIRF is a pro adiposis factor and inter interestingly enough is overexpressed in human obesity patients. Um, and UPG2 is involved in carbohydrate conversion, um, directly <coughs> contributing to glucose metabolism. So in conclusion, we find evidence of differential gene expression between physiological states. Um, we also find that some genes show, showing differential, express, differential expression are homologous to humans. Um, and future directions would include using the same methods um, we see here to look at other species to see if the same genes and genetic pathways are also regulated in the same way during hibernation. Um, it would be interesting to sample more of the phylogeny um, in order to get at the question of whether or not the common ancestor of all mammals was a hibernator. Um, and with that, I would like to thank um, the Yoder Lab, especially my advisor, Ann Yoder, um, the Elba Lab, um, Jose Luis, who did all of 